गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर हियर एट कैमिलियर टू डिस्कस द सीरियस पेपर विच वॉज कंडक्टेड जस्टेड दैट इज ऑन सेप्टेंबर एथ नाउ बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द डिस्कशन ऑफ द पेपर लेट मी टेल यू दिस टाइम दिस मैथ पेपर इज अ बिट यू कैन से थ्री की वन और यू कैन ऑल्सो से लेंगी वन ना पर्सन टू पर्सन द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस थ्री की एंड लेंथी वेरी इस बार एक्चुअली हुआ क्या कि एक पार्टिकुलर सेट है हमारे पास में सी सेट उसमें डेटा इंटरप्रिटेशन के क्वेश्चंस को उन्होंने फर्स्ट टाइम इंट्रोड्यूस करवाया नाउ बिफोर हैंड आल्सो डेट डेटा इंटरप्रिटेशन क्वेश्चंस वेर देयर इन द पेपर ऑफ सीनियर्स बट दे आर वेरी लेस इन नंबर बट दिस टाइम इट हैज ड्रास्टिकली इंक्रीज फ्रॉम से फाइव और सिक्स टू फिफ्टीन सो पीपल थॉट दैट दिस पेपर इज ए लेंदी वन बट सपोज वी डोंट कंसिडर दीज क्वेश्चन and then we see the total paper then you find very easy because almost the other questions of the paper are according to the previous trend of cbs paper now coming to the uh, paper pattern part so in total you know there are 100 questions so if you exclude those of 15 questions which has come from your uh, data interpretation sections uh, you have got with 85 questions and out of that 40 questions are from as usual mensuration and geometry this time trigonometry question were bit reduced which usually uh, comes in number of 10 or 12 in the paper this time it has reduced and it has got only 5 to 6 questions in your paper which you are dealing with trigonometry one chapter which has been increased in its value is logarithm uh, usually from logarithm chapter you get one or two or maximum three question but this time it has been increased to five questions and the questions of logarithm were a bit lengthier Now for that particular uh, thing, the uh, students are saying that it's a lengthy paper. Now it's a better advice from me and from any other teacher. I think who is teaching maths, you may be taking coaching from somewhere. So it's a bit instruction from all the maths teacher to the students of CDS. Then whenever you are going to appear CDS maths paper, and you know that it is conducted between three to five in the afternoon. So why you are bothering about those questions which are a bit lengthier in nature? Better in the question paper if you see it carefully, then you will find many questions which can be solved in just thirty seconds. And uh, frankly speaking, this time you will be if you have seen the paper uh, properly and if you have taken the coaching from a right place like Cavalier, then you will be led to know that there are somewhere around forty questions which are uh, totally you can solve it within a minute or forty-five seconds, and that is from the class notes itself. Now the students are bothering about those questions which they have not done. Now why they are not happy with the fact that 40 to 50 questions, which are of one minute nature, has come from the notes itself. So uh, I will take those questions uh, in this particular video, which were a little bit complex in nature, and uh, I will try to solve it out. Maybe it will take some time because as I already told that uh, these questions are a bit lengthier. And definitely, I will take those questions also, which are uh, to be solved with tricks. So let's start uh, today. We are going to discuss set C, set C of uh, CDS math paper conducted yesterday. Uh, let's start discussing the set C CDS math 2019 second paper. I will be taking selecting question, selected questions as I have told you earlier, and uh, I will be taking the first question as question number eleven. Now in this question, we have already told you that a and b are two positive real numbers, and two equations are given to you. First equation is a root a plus b root b is equal to 32, and the second equation is a root b plus b root a is equal to 31. Now first of all, the students find it very uncomfortable to solve because uh, they may not be getting the first step. And uh, the question is asking you to calculate the value of, or to find the value of five times of a plus b all upon seven. Now, how you get the idea? First of all, you have to square both the equation, and then you have to subtract it. Now, when you will square both the equation, now suppose I want to square both the equation, then I should be very much clear with the squares of this value. Thirty-two square is one zero two four, and thirty-one square is nine sixty one. Now, on squaring, we have to use the formula, and the formula is a plus b whole square is equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab. So you have to start with this particular formula, and that formula is going to be used for the total question. So what you will get here, if you square this particular part, it will become a cube, then b square that is b cube, and then you will be getting 2ab root a. 
and 32 square I already written 1024. Now coming to the second equation, if you square this equation, then you are going to get a square b plus a b square and the last term will be same, that is 2ab root a. Now I can clearly tell you or you can also tell me that we have to subtract the two equations to get rid of this particular value. Now when you subtract, the sign will change, this term will get cancelled, you can have a subtraction here, this value will become 4 minus 63 and here you are going to get a cube plus b cube minus a square b minus a b square. Now from here you have to start taking the idea that if you break this formula of a cube plus b cube which is a plus b multiplied with a square minus a b plus b square or from these two terms you have to take common minus a b that means it will become a plus b and the total value is equals to 63. Now out of these two you can take common a plus b. Now from the remaining you will be getting a square minus a b plus b square for this and then it is minus a. So at last what you are getting here is it is becoming the formula. Which formula it is becoming a square plus b square minus 2 a b which is the formula for a minus b whole square. So in total what you are getting finally is a plus b into a minus b whole square equals to 63. Now here you have to stop for a while and you have to think of some possible values of a and b which will satisfy this equation and those values are a5 and b3. If you will put these values here then you will get that particular answer which is there. So what is that value you are going to get that is 5 plus 3, 5 plus 3 into 5 minus 3 whole square. This one is a plus b and this one is a minus b whole square. So suppose I am taking a as 5 and b as 2, sorry, a as 5 and b as 2. So you are getting here 7 into 9 which is equal to 63. Now whatever values of a and b you have taken, just put that value in this expression. Your answer will become 5 into 5 plus 2 that is 7 upon 7 and the answer becomes 5. Now if you will see this particular question, now why I have taken this question because it is a bit complicated question. Now here when I am doing the question, might be I have taken more than uh, 2 minutes, but the point is you have to see this question and if in the paper you cannot solve this question, then you have to simply skip this question. And this type of questions I am taking in this video because you may be having problem with these questions only. Those questions which are simple you have already solved it, so I will be taking those questions only which are a bit lengthier in nature. Question which we are going to discuss is question number 40 from the same set. What is the question that uh, PQRS is a parallelogram? Now, what I will be doing, I will be reading the question and I will draw the figure and uh, side by side we have, I will be explaining how it is coming. Now, the question is let PQRS is a parallelogram. So, first of all, I have drawn this parallelogram. All of you know that uh, what, it is, what is a parallelogram. So, PQRS is a parallelogram. And in the question it is given that the diagonals PR and QS intersect at O. Diagonals PR and QS intersect at O. So we have drawn this figure. Now he is saying that if the triangle QRS is an equilateral triangle. Now try to understand the fact. If he is saying QRS is an equilateral triangle then he is considering that these two sides are equal. Now it is possible only when the figure is a rhombus. That means a parallelogram whose adjacent sides are equal then it will definitely become a rhombus. And in rhombus we have a property that the diagonals bisect each other at 90. Now in the question it is given that triangle QRS is an equilateral triangle with side 10 cm. That means this is 10 and this is 10. And if it is an equilateral triangle then definitely this side will also become 10. Now if this entire side is 10 cm and we know that diagonals of a parallelogram or you can say diagonals of a rhombus bisect each other at 90 degree then definitely this value will become 5 cm. And already we have told that this is a rhombus that means this side will also become 10 and this side will also become 10. Now question is how to find the length of the diagonal PR. We have to find the length of the diagonal PR. For that you have to use Pythagoras theorem. As I have already told you that this is a right angled triangle. So using Pythagoras theorem. Now this side is hypotenuse, so we can simply write 
PQ square is equals to OQ square plus OP square. Now PQ is 10, that means it will become 100. OQ we have already proved that it is 5. So 5 square is 25 plus OP square. Now if you will solve it, it will give you 75 under root and the under root of 75 is 5 root 3. That means you have already got the half length of diagonal here. And as we know, it is getting bisected at the point O. That means to calculate diagonal PR, we have to simply multiply 2 with OP, which we have calculated as 5 root 3, and hence the answer becomes 10 root 3 centimeter, which is there in the V of C. Okay, now coming to the next question where the people have faced some problems, and some students, some bunch of students have faced this problem. That is question number 73. Now, what exactly is the question is? That Radha and Rani are sisters. So first of all, uh, this is a question of age. So we have to do something like this. Radha and Rani. They are both sisters. Five years back. That means you have to first consider their present age. And then according to question, if you are considering the age of Radha as X and Rani as Y respectively, uh, that are their present age. Now 5 years back, that means we have to take their age 5 years ago. It will become x minus 5 and it will become y minus 5. The question is saying that 5 years back the age of Radha is 3 times, that is 3 times of Rani's age. And again in the question 1 year ago, 1 year back, that means the age of Radha will become x minus 1 and Rani will become y minus 1. Now according to the question 1 year back, the age of Radha is two times of Rani's age. Now that is the question in which you have to find the age difference between their present age. Now what you have to do, you have to first simplify these two equations to form linear equation into variables and you have to solve for x and y. Once you will get that values of x and y as their present ages, we can take the difference. Now I think all of you know how to solve this equation. You have to first open it and you have to write this equation will become x minus 3y is equals to minus 10 and on opening this particular equation it will become x minus y what is equals to 2y minus 2 and it will become x minus 2y is equals to minus 1. Now these are the two equations which actually you have to solve. Now what are we going to solve? Let's write this equation separately x minus 3y equals to minus 10 and x minus 2y is equal to minus 1. Both x are same coefficient, so we just start with subtracting them. It will become minus plus and minus. This value will become minus y equals to minus 9 and y value is coming out to be 9. Now once you get this value, you can put it in any one of the equations. Now suppose I put this equation uh, 2. So what I am going to get here, if you put it here, it will become x minus 18 is equal to minus 1. That will give you x equal to 17. Now according to our question, x is Radha's age which has come out to be 17 year and y is Rani's age which has come out to be 9 year and you have to simply take the difference and it is coming 8 year which is there in your first option itself. Now coming to a question from DI, the uh, particular part which I was talking about in the first half of the video. Uh, these are some questions where the uh, people have found some difficulty. Now just see this table, what this table is about according to the question, uh, it is the frequency distribution for two series of observations. You can see those two series are series 1 and series 2. And for these two series, frequency are being given along with the class interval. And in both the cases, the sum total of the frequency is also given. Now this question consists of two parts. First part is asking you to find the mean of series 1. And the second part is asking you to find the mod of series 2. Now in this particular question, what actually is bothering us is the values of x and y which is not given. Now what, what we have to do exactly in this particular question, we have to first find this x and y. If you can find that x and y, then you can easily find the mean and mod because we have a formula for that. So I will tell you only the method till 
you get the value of x and y because after that you know that for calculation mean of any series your formula is x bar is equals to summation of fi xi upon summation of fi and for mod it is simply mod is equals to l plus f1 minus f0 upon 2f1 minus f0 minus f2 into h where the symbols have their user name now how you are going to get that now see as we know this total is the summation of frequency which is given to us as 100 so first of all we will add this all equation the 20 plus 10 30 30 plus 15 is 45 then x plus 5 so what you are going to write here is according to the series 1 45 plus x plus y is equals to 100 that makes x plus y is equals to 55 now let's consider that this is our equation 1 now similarly if you will add all this value you will get one more equation in terms of x and y now you all know how to add 8 plus 4 12 plus 4 16 so the next equation is coming 16 plus 2x plus y is equals to 100 that means 2x plus y equals to 80 so now this is a very simple equation which you can solve very easily to get your answers for x and y and once your x and y are here you can easily solve to get the value of mean and mod after calculation the mean will come out to be 37.6 that is there in your C option and the calculation of mod will give you the value of mod as 46 now that is the uh, next question which is covering 4 questions now I have told you in the starting that uh, there are some questions in this time paper which deals with data integrity now this is one of them now it consists of 4 more questions below this that is 7, 8, 9, 10 Question is not tough, but uh, I think it needs a bit of calculation which makes students a bit uncomfortable with this type of question. Now what is this question exactly is, let me read it out. Uh, question is, the data given here shows, the, shows that Indian roads are turning deadlier over the year. That means the data is about the uh, number of bikers, number of pedestrians, number of cyclists who are killed during some particular year in road accident that is 2014, 2015, 16 and 17 these values are the total number of persons who has killed while driving a bike pedestrian that means on walk and these are on cycle these values are given and you can see that uh, according to the table this value is increasing per year now what is the first part of the question the question is saying what was the average number of pedestrians killed per day in the year 2017? Now, first of all, you have to search where the number of pedestrians lies in the table. Now, this is the second row. And he is asking you, in the year 2017, that means 2017, the value is 20457. And the question is, what is the average number of pedestrians killed per day? That means to get this value, you have to divide 20457 with 365 that is the number of days in the year 2017 and that will give you the answer as 56 which is there in the D option and that calculation you have to do because that calculation will give you the value near about that it will not giving you the exact value then next question is what is the approximate percentage change in the pedestrians fatalities that means pedestrians group is this one now he is asking you to calculate the approximate percentage change in the pedestrians fatalities during the period from 2014 to 2017 now for calculating any percentage increase or decrease you have to first see the change in value now in the year 2014 the pedestrian killing rate was 12330 and it become 20457 in the year 2017 so major increase is 20457 minus 12330 and then you have to divide it with 12330 into 100 to get the approximate percentage change and this will give you some value near about approximate is already a word near about 66 percent which is given in the first option now the third part that is the uh, ninth question is asking you again the same thing what is the average number of bikers killed daily in road accidents in the year 2017 now this time we have to go to the first row in the year 2017 total bikers killed is 48746 and you have to find average number of bikers killed daily 
that means you have to again divide it with 365 and which on calculation will give you some value near about 134 that means that is there in the B option and the last part that is the tenth part of this particular question is what is the average number of cyclists killed daily in road accidents in 2017 that means you have to go to the third row in 2017 this is 3559 Delhi average you have to find that means you have to divide it with 365 and this value is near about 10 that is given in the first box. Let's take uh, one question from geometry fixer. Now that is question number 45 in which uh, some students have faced problem because the question is a bit lengthy but when you will draw the figure and uh, while reading the question you will get the hint that how it is going to be solved. Now what is this question? He is saying that let two lines P and Q be parallel. So we will draw two lines P and Q which are parallel to each other. Now you have to take two points B and C on the line P. Now he has not mentioned where you have to take so you just take it here anywhere but it should be on the line P. Next he has to take two points and take two points D and E on the line Q. So we are going to take D and E here. Now the question is the line through B and E that means the line through B and E intersects the line through C and D at the point A that is between the lines P and Q. Now this is the exact figure. Now once you draw the figure and you have studied geometry triangle chapter properly then I can clearly see that these two triangles are going to be similar to each other. And to prove the two triangles to be similar you have to just prove that all the three corresponding angles of this particular triangle must be equals to the corresponding angle of this particular triangle. Now how you are going to prove it? Angle B will be equal to angle E because of alternate angles. Angle C will be equal to angle D according to again alternate angles and these two are vertically opposite angles. That means we have already proved that triangle ABC is similar to triangle AD. Now what exactly question is asking you is he has given you the ratio between the sides AC and AD. That means the given is AC ratio AD is 4 ratio 9. That means you can say this is 4 and this is 9. That is the ratio. And he is asking you to find the ratio of the area of triangle ABC with area of triangle AD. Now, those who have studied triangles properly, they must know a theorem is there lying between them that whenever you have proved two triangles to be similar then the ratio of the areas of the two triangles must be equal to ratio of the squares of their corresponding side. Now here in my case the sides corresponding to these two triangles are AC and ED. So it will be equal to AC square upon AD square and you will finally get the answer as 16 upon 81 as the ratio of AC and AD is given to you as 4 ratio and that is given in our C also. Let's take uh, a question from trigonometry. Now this time we have got one question. I don't seem to be difficult but it was very easy question. That is question number 33. Question says that the angle theta lies between 0 degree and 90 degree with the given thing is sin theta equals to 3 by 5. And one more value is given as x which is equal to cot theta. And then he is asking you to calculate the value of. Now that is a number expression. But you can solve it very easily. 1 plus 3x 9x square plus 27x cube plus 81x to the power of 4 and then 243x to the power of 5. Now two things are there. All of us know that from here with this data we can easily get the value of cot theta that will give us the value of x. Now one thing is you can put the values of x in each and every term present in this particular expression or you can think of creating some formulas here. Now if you will see clearly then you will be getting some formula. Now suppose I take this part only. Now in this part can we write it as 1 plus 3x whole cube? Now think about this because if you can think that then it will reduce your work to a little bit extent more. a plus b whole cube formula is a cube plus b cube plus 3a square b plus 3ab square. Now according to my expression, my a is 1 and b is 3x. Now suppose I take the first term, 1 cube, 1 cube is 1, it is here. b cube 3x whole cube is 27x cube, that is here. 
Then comes 3a square b. 3a square b will give you uh, 3x and then comes 9x square that is 3ab square. 3ab square. So you are getting this total term. So instead of writing all this, I can first of all reduce it into 1 plus vx whole power 3. Then from there I can take on 81 x to the power of 4 which will give me 1 plus 3x. Now what you have to do exactly from here by drawing the table as we know sin theta is perpendicular upon hypotenuse. So this side is perpendicular and this side is hypotenuse and it will form the Pythagorean triplet which will give you the base as 4. And all of us know that cot theta is base upon perpendicular. That means the value of x is 4 by 3. Now you have to simply substitute the values of x here and on solving. Now if you will solve this value 3 by 4 by 3 to the power of 4, it will give you 256 upon 81 and then 1 plus 4. Now if you will solve this value, this answer will be giving you 1365 that is present in D also. I am taking, I am just changing the chapter, I got a question from average. Now most of the people have wrong, um, means uh, done it wrong. I don't know why. So let's see what is this question. This question says that a library has an average number of 510 visitors on Sunday. That means on Sunday, the total number of visitors visiting on an average in a particular Sunday is 510 and 240 on other days. On other days means Monday plus other days. That means uh, from Monday to Saturday, the average number of visitors is 240. Now question is asking you that what is the average number of visitors per day in a month of 30 days beginning with a Saturday. Now before starting this question, let me clear you that uh, he is asking you with that clause that the beginning of the month of 30 days is a Saturday. That means the first of this particular month is Saturday. That means you are going to get the second of this month as Sunday. Now he has already put an emphasis on the day Sunday. So you have to first see that in this particular month, how many Sundays you are going to get. Now if second is a Sunday, then the next Sunday will come on 9th. Then the next Sunday is on 16th. Then the next Sunday is on 23rd. And then the next Sunday is on 30th. That means in this particular month, there are total 5 Sundays. So when you are going to calculate the average visitors, then I will just use the formula for combined average that means x12 bar is equals to n1x1 bar plus n2x2 bar upon n1 plus n2. Now here n1 and n2 represents the total number of days. Now n1 represents total number of Sundays which we have already calculated that is, it is 5 and the average number of visitors on a Sunday is 510. Now similarly for other days, now if 30 days out of those 30 days, 5 are Sundays, then the other 25 days are other days and in those the average number of visitors is 240 and in total it is 30. Now if you will solve this value, then your answer will come out to be 285 which is there in the C option. Now next, uh, let's take a question from that particular chapter which has been given more importance in this particular paper, that is logarithms. Now, suppose we talk about this question, question number 77. He is asking you to find the number of digits in this three particular expressions. One is 7 to the power of 25, second is 8 to the power of 23, and the third is 9 to the power of 20. You have to find the total number of digits in each one of them respectively. And for that, he has already given you some values, like he has given you the value of log 2 to the base of 10, and then log 3 to the base of 10, and then log 7 to the base of 10. And the respective values are 0 0.301, 0 0.477, and then it is 0 0.845. Now, for doing this question, you have to take care of the options as well. Because as a view, you can see that you can see the options and you can see the answers. Now, for that, what you have to do exactly that I am going to tell. So, I have written down the options here. Now, when you start this question, what is the trick? Trick is whenever we are interested to find the number of digits in any such kind of expressions, we have to first take log. So suppose I am interested to find the number of digits in this particular value, 
so I have to take log and in a log chapter there is a formula that n log a is equals to log a to the power of n that means it is given in this form log a to the power of n this 25 will shift to the front and all of them are having a base of 10 now you have already got the value of log 7 here that value is given to you as 0 0.845 now if you will multiply this value and that needs some calculation you will get somewhere around 21 point something now what you have to do what is the way to find the number of digits now whatever value you are getting in the left hand side of this decimal you have to simply add one to it that means the total number of digits is going to come as 22 now if you see the option then clearly this two cannot be the answer and out of them any one of them can be the answer now to reach the final answer you have to calculate one more value so let's do this particular value again the same thing i will tell log a to the power of 23 23 will come to the front and in place of 8 you can further break it into 2 to the power of 3 now this 3 will come to the front because of this formula and it will become 69 log 2 and the value of log 2 is already given to you that is 0 0.301 now when you will multiply this value, this value is going to give you an answer somewhere around 20 point something. Now as per the rule, what you have to do, you have to add 1 with the digit in the left hand side and it will give you 21. Now instead of calculating 9 to the power of 20, you can directly take the C option because already you have got the two answers as 22 and 21. To the a bit different question uh, from number system, that is question number 86. Now question is asking us to calculate that what is the largest value of n that means you have to find the maximum value of n such that 10 to the power of n divides the expression 6 to the power of 23 into 75 to the power of 9 into 105 to the power of 2. That means you have to put a value of n in the power of 10 such that this entire expression is divisible by 10 to the power of n. Now when you will start this question, you have to think that in this three forms, there is no 10. That means first of all, you have to break it into prime factors and try to get the value of 10 in those cases. Now what we are going to do exactly is, in place of 6, if you will draw the prime factor for this particular number, 9 to the term, 2 into 3, whole raised to the power of 23. Then coming to 75, you can write it as 3 into 5 square to the power of 9. And in place of 105, you can simply write 3 into 5 into 7 to the power of 2. Now you have to start gathering all the powers of prime numbers and then you have to make the pair in such a way that 10 is visible. For example, from here you will get 2 to the power of 23 and from here you will get 3 to the power of 23. Then from the next you will get 3 to the power of 9 and then from here you will get 5 to the power of 18. Then from here you will get 3 to the power of 2, then 5 to the power of 2 and then 7 to the power of 2. Now just see, this value is 2 to the power of 23. For 5 you have got 18 and 2. And all other terms are meaningless for me because from there you can never form a number 10. Now what we are left with is 2 to the power of 23 and 5 to the power of 20. Now what you have to do exactly is take the lesser power. That means in power of 5 it is 20 and in power of 2 it is 23. So take the lesser power. That means from here you can write 5 to the power of 20 as it is. From here you have to break it into 2 to the power of 20 and 2 to the power of 3 which is meaningless for me. That means now you can write this total expression as 10 to the power of 20 and hence the value of n becomes 20 which is the maximum value of n. Okay, now let's move to the next question of this set C that is a question from HCFLC and the question is you have to find the LCM of 1 by 3, 5 by 6, 2 by 9 and 4 upon 27. Now to find the value of HCF in case of fraction, the trick which you have to use is, now suppose in a question of fraction you have been asked to calculate LCM, then you have to take the LCM of the numerators and then you have to divide it with the HCF of denominators. Now in my case, 
the numerators are 1, 5, 2 and 4. So we have to take the LCM of that and then 3, 6, 9, 27 is the denominator. So we have to take the LCM. The resulting will be the LCM of this total fraction. Now as we know how to calculate the LCM part 1, 5, 2, 4. If you will take the LCM of these values then it will give you 20. And SCF as you know three highest common factor. So out of this when you are going to calculate the HCF, then it will give you 36927 HCF. That means 3 if you are taking, then 1, 2, 3 and 9. So HCF becomes 3. So the correct answer is your D option that is 20 by 3. Now next is a question from quadratic equation chapter. Now this time you have got some 4 to 5 questions from this chapter quadratic equation and all of them are approachable questions. Now talking about this question that is question number 19. You have been given two equations. First one is x square plus 5x plus 6 equals to 0 and the second equation is x square plus kx plus 1 equals to 0. And the question is saying that both the equations have got a common root. Now in this question Dealing with common root, what exactly is the method that the equation which you can factorize first find the values of x from that particular equation. Now all of us know how to factorize quadratic equation. From here you will get two values of x that is minus 3 and minus 2. Now to get the value of k because in the question he has asked you to find the value of k. What you have to do, you have to first put this x as minus 3 in the first equation it will give you 9 minus 3k plus 1 equals to 0. In the next step it will become minus 3k equals to minus 10 and then you will get one of the values of k as 10 by 3. Now similarly in the same second equation you have to put the value of x as minus 2 which will give you 4 minus 2k plus 1 is equals to 0. That means in the next step it will become minus 2k is equals to minus 5 and then the answer will come k equals to 5 by 4. So if you will see then in the option B you are getting both the answer that is 5 by 2 or 10 by 3 are the values of k. Next we are going to take a question from you can say both chapters are included in that ratio and proportion plus percentage. Now what is the question? That is question number 23. The train fare and bus fare between two stations is in the ratio of 3 to 4. That means the bus fare upon train fare. No, the question is reverse of that. That means train fare upon bus fare. It is being given that the train fare upon bus fare is in the ratio of 3 ratio 4. That means in this type of question you can take, let us assume that train fare is rupees 30 and bus fare is rupees 40. Now what the question is saying that if the train fare increases by 20%, that, that means you have to get the 20% increment in 30. Now if you take the 20% increment then it will become 36 and in the denominator you have been asked to take the increase by 30%. Now if you take the increment of 30% in 40, that means 12, it will become 52. Now question is asking, what is the ratio between the revised train fare and revised bus fare? So you have to simply divide it with 4 and the answer will become 9 by 13, which is there in the A option. Question, question is taken from division algorithm chapter that is coming under number system. Now what is the question? Question is saying when a number n is divided by 17 then in this process the quotient is coming out to be 182 and instead of giving the remainder he is saying that the difference between quotient and remainder now I don't know which one is greater but obviously quotient is greater than remainder in a particular question of division. So this difference is given to you as 175 and you have been asked to calculate this value of n. Now in this type of question we have an algorithm which is known as division algorithm. Now according to division algorithm the formula is dividend is equals to 
divisor into cosine plus remainder now in this question the number which is to be divided is to be supposed to be n now this number is divided by 17 that means divisor is 17 and cosine is given to you as 182 now question is saying that if you want to calculate the value of remainder then you have to take use of this this expression tells you that difference between cosine and remainder is 175 out of which cosine is 182 then obviously remainder will come as 7 now if you will multiply these two values then you will get here the value as 3094 and then add 7 to it and the answer will become 3101 which is there in your C option. Now next question is question number 25. Now that is a direct question of the chapter time and work. Now we know there is something called chain rule according to which n1 d1 is equal to n2 d2. Now, in this question, it is given that a stock of food grains is enough for 240 men for 48 days. And now the question is asking how long will the same stock last for 160 men? That means now he is asking that if 160 men is available, then how many days the food grains will last? So let us assume that this particular value D2 is to be calculated. Now, in the table of 80, <laughs> you can simply cut this 2 and 3 and this will get cancelled here with 24 and the answer will come out to be 72 days which is there in the A option. Log cos theta to the base of 10 plus log sin theta to the base of 10 and then it is continuing like this log 10 theta to the base of 10 then it is log cot theta to the base of 10 and then it is log sec theta to the base of 10 and lastly log cosec theta to the base of 10. Now for solving this type of question you have to know two things. One the laws of logarithm and the second is the relation between the different trigonometric ratios. Now all of us know that sin and cosec they are reciprocal of each other. Similarly cos and sec they are reciprocal of each other. And similarly, tan and cot, they are reciprocal of each other. So first of all, we have to write them together in pairs. Now, in logarithm chapter, we have a formula that log a to the base of 10 plus log b to the base of 10 is always equals to log ab to the base of 10. Now, those pairs which I have identified as reciprocal pairs, we have to put them together. Now using this formula, if I write log, then it will become sin theta into cosec theta to the base of 10. Similarly log cos theta into sec theta to the base of 10 and then log tan theta into cot theta to the base of 10. Now in each case, whenever you are going to multiply two reciprocal values, then the answer will be 1. So it will become log 1 to the base of 10, then again it will become log 1 to the base of 10 and then again it will become log 1 to the base of 10. And according to logarithmic concept, log 1 to the base of 10 is always equal to 0. That means my answer will become 0 that is there in my B also. Now coming to the next question, again from trigonometry, question number 32. The question is given, if cos square x plus cos x is equal to 1, then you have to find the value of sin to the power of 12x plus 3 into sin to the power of 10x plus 3 sin to the power of 8x plus sin to the power of 6x. Now before starting this question, you have to identify the formula which is going to be used to calculate this entire value. Now if you can understand that formula of a plus b whole cube, and all of us know that the formula is a cube plus b cube plus 3a square b plus 3ab square. So using this identity, you can write this total value as sine to the power of 4x plus sine square x total whole cube. Now you can see very easily sine to the power of 4x whole cube is sine to the power of 12x and sine square x whole cube is sine to the power of 6x. That means after getting these two terms of the formula, you can directly search for 3a square b and 3ab square. Taking this as a and this as b, you will definitely get this answer. Now after writing the question in this form, you have to get back to your original equation. 
Now in this equation, if you calculate the value of cos x, then it will give you 1 minus cos square x. That means cos x, you have already proved that sin square x. Now in the last step, where we have stopped, let us put the value of sin square x as cos x. Now if sin square x is cos x, then sin to the power of 4x is cos square x. And the whole cube of this quantity. Now as we have already been given in the question that cos square x plus cos x is 1, so you can replace here it with 1, the cube of 1 is 1, which is there in A also. Now coming to the next question, this is question number 35, again from trigonometry, and it is a very simple question. Now in this question, he has asked you to get the value of sin 19 degree upon cos 71 degree plus cos 73 degree upon sin 17 degree. Now if you know, if you have any exposure of 11th class formula then you can use it but before using that just think you can solve it by the concept of 10th class complementary angle concept. Now in place of sin 19 you can write cos 71 degree and when you have changed the numerator of one of them then don't change the denominator of that. Let it be cos 71. Now similarly in the numerator of the second fraction in place of cos 73 degree you can write sin 17 degree and the denominator is sin 17. And the formula which you have used here is sin 90 degree minus theta is cos theta and cos 90 degree minus theta is sin theta. Now if you have used this formula then only you have got this answer. Now you have to simply cut down this value 1 plus 1 answer is 2 which is there in C also. Now let's take a question from geometry part. Now we have got a question that is question number 41 in which the question is given that in a cuboid, now all of us know that in a cuboid there are six faces in which there is a front face, there is a back face, there is a top face, there is a bottom face, and then front face, there is a back face. Now, total six faces are there, out of which three of them are similar to the other three. Now, the question says that the areas of three adjacent faces, now you can say adjacent means this one, this one, and the top one. Now if we take then LB, BH and HL will be treated as the areas of three adjacent faces because in a cuboid the faces are nothing but a rectangle. Now suppose we write LB then the value of this area is given to you as X and then BH it is Y and then HL it is Z. Question is asking you that if V is the volume of the cuboid then you have to express this V in terms of x, y and z. And what we know about cuboid that volume of cuboid is always equals to L into B into H. And we have already taken this volume as V. So what we have to do exactly is to multiply these three values so that we can get the value of LBH in terms of x, y and z. Now if you multiply these three equations then you will get L square B square X square is equals to LY and then it can be written as LBH whole square is equals to XYZ. Now what is actually LBH? That is nothing but V. So we can write V square equals to XYZ and that is your final answer because that is given in V option. Okay, next question is again from geometry part. That is question number 42. The question is saying that in an equilateral triangle, now all of us know that in an equilateral triangle all the three sides are equal. And the question is saying that L is the length of the median. Now you should know one thing that in case of an equilateral triangle, median, angle bisector, perpendicular bisector and altitude are nothing but the same length. And what we know about a median is that median is a line segment which is drawn through any vertex of the triangle touches the opposite side at exactly midpoint or you can say that median bisects the opposite side. Now in case of equilateral triangle this length is also acting as the height and all of us know that height of an equilateral triangle is nothing but root 3 by 2 of A where A is nothing but the side each side of an equilateral triangle. Now question starts with this line that if L is the length of median of this equilateral triangle then what is the area of this triangle in terms of L. 
so all of us know that area of an equilateral triangle is root 3 by 4 a square but he is asking you to calculate the area in terms of L and I have already given you that relation that L is equals to root 3 by 2 of A so from here what you have to do you have to calculate the value of A that is the sign in terms of L it is going to give from this equation 12 by root 3 and simply substitute the value of A with that value and it will become 4L square by 3 so after cancellation the final answer is coming root 3 L square by 3 which is there present in the A also. Now next question now next question is again from the chapter geometry now let's draw this uh, particular question that is question number 46 question is an equilateral triangle and a square now of us know that equilateral triangle have got all its three sides equal and in the square also all the four sides are equal now question is saying that an equilateral triangle and a square are constructed using metallic wires of equal length that means whatever is the perimeter of the equilateral triangle that is equals to perimeter of the square and we know that perimeter of an equilateral triangle is 3a and perimeter of the square is 4b so what we are going to get here is a by b ratio that is the side of the equilateral triangle upon side of the square is coming out to be in the ratio of 4 by 3 now the question is saying that what is the ratio of area of this equilateral triangle and the area of the square and while calculating this area you have to take the side of the triangle as 4 and the side of the square as 3 now in the last question we have already used that area of equilateral triangle is root 3 by 4 a square and a is given to you as 4 so you can write here a square that is 16 and area of square is nothing but side square so it will become 3 square that is 9 now after cancellation the final answer you will be getting is 4 root 3 by 9 that means 4 root 3 ratio 9 which is there in our C option okay next question again we are going to take it from geometry chapter that is question number 48 the question is ABC is a triangle right angled at B now first of all we will draw a triangle that is a right angle triangle which is right angled at B and apart from it the uh, data which is given to us is AB is 5 cm and BC is 10 cm now question is asking then what is the length of the perpendicular drawn from the vertex B to the hypotenuse suppose we have drawn this uh, perpendicular so he is asking you to calculate the value of this perpendicular so let us assume that this is P. Now, two things are possible. First of all, we will take the triangle's area. What is the area of a right angle triangle? We all know that area is nothing but half into base into height. And according to my figure, it is AB into BC. So it will give me half into 5 into 10. That means the area of this right angle triangle is 25 centimeters square. But he is not interested in area, he is interested for this perpendicular which we have drawn from this right angle vertex to the hypotenuse. Now again, if I see this particular part, now this is my hypotenuse. Using Pythagoras theorem, we can calculate the hypotenuse of this particular triangle. That is AC is equals to AB square plus BC square under root. Now AB square means 25 and BC square means 100 net total is coming 125 under root which is equals to 5 root 5 now once we get this value 5 root 5 and we have already got the area then looking the triangle from this particular side this is the base and this is the height so what we can do we can simply write again area of triangle abc is nothing but half into now see this is my base because we are putting the triangle from this side this is my base and this is my uh, perpendicular so half into 5 root 5 into height that we have to calculate that is p area we have already calculated as 25 so we can put the value of area here half into 5 root 5 into p that we want to calculate now just cancel this 5 it will become 10 upon root 5 now in place of 10 you can simply write 2 root 5 into root 5 upon root 5 
so the final answer which is coming is 2 root 5 cm which is given in b option Now next question I want to take from the chapter quadratic equation that is question number 89 the question is saying that the equation the quadratic equation x square plus px plus q equals to 0 has two roots equals to p and q and question is simply asking to find you the values of p and q with the condition that q should not be equals to 0. Now as we all know that in a quadratic equation the roots are alpha and beta and that values in this particular question is given as p and q. Sum of the roots is always equals to minus b by a. That means if I compare it with the standard form of quadratic equation then according to my equation a corresponds to 1, b corresponds to p and c corresponds to q. And we know that the sum of the roots is always equals to minus b by a. And in my case, it is equals to minus p. And similarly, product of the roots, that means p into q, is always equals to c by a, which in my case will be simply equals to q. Now, if I cancel q from both sides, the value of p I will get as 1. That is asked in the question. So, one of the value, that is p, is 1. Now, if I put the value of p in the first equation, I will definitely get the second value, that is of q. So, how much it is coming? 1 plus q is equals to minus 1 that means q is equals to minus 2. So the final answer I am getting is p1 and q minus 2 that is there in my first option A. Now coming to our next question, now that is uh, that question requires a critical uh, bit of thinking because question just says that how many pairs of natural numbers are there such that the difference of their squares is 35. Now what he is saying is there are two natural numbers, you have to first square them and you have to take the difference to be equals to 35. He is simply asking that how many such pairs of numbers are there. For solving this question there is no formula, only thing which is required is that you should be able to remember the squares from 1 to 20. If you are done with this particular thing then you can easily tell what is the answer. Now suppose I will take a value a as 6 and b as 1. Now why I have taken this value because a square 6 square is 36 and b square that is 135. So one pair I have got that is a as 6 and b as 1. Now similarly if you will go forward then in case of 17 and 18. Now suppose I take a as 18 and b as 17. Now if you remember then the square of 18 is 324 and square of 17 is 289 that makes the difference is equals to 35 again so what are the possible pairs we have got for this particular question is two pairs that is there in b option hence the answer is two now coming to our next question that is question number 91 that is again a question from the chapter quadratic equation now this time what the question is saying is x square minus 6x plus b equals to 0 is the given quadratic equation and he is saying that b minus 6 is one of the roots of this equation. Now when you say that a particular thing or particular value is the root of this quadratic equation that means if you substitute b minus 6 in place of x in this equation then the total value should become equals to 0. And Related to that, he is asking you to find the maximum value of b square. That means, first of all, you have to put this b minus 6 in place of x. Then you will get a quadratic equation, solve it, get the value of b and take the square. Now, if I do so, it will become b minus 6 whole square minus 6 into b minus 6 plus b equals to g. Now using the formula you can identify, you can easily open this b square plus 36 minus 12b minus 6b plus 36 plus b is equals to g. So in total you are getting b square minus 17b plus 72 equals to g. Now if you think of the possible factors then definitely it is 9 and 8. Now when you will solve it you will get two values of b, one is 9 and one is 8. But you cannot take both the values because he has asked you to find the maximum value of b square. 
and the maximum value of b square can only come when you take the value of b as 9. So my answer for this question becomes 9 square that is 81 which is present in the d option. Now coming to the next question which is again a question of number theory, number system. It is question number 92. He has given you that the value of a is equals to 7 plus 4 root 3 under root and he is asking you to calculate the value of a plus 1 by a. Now in this type of question, first of all you have to find the value of a. Now what you are going to do to calculate that? First of all you have to see that what is there present under the root that is simply 7 plus 4 root 3. Now main thing is to identify the sign. If there is a plus sign between the two values that means it is going to be reduced into the formula of a square plus b square plus 2ab which is nothing but a plus b whole square. So what we have to do exactly first of all we have to take out this particular term from under root and equate it directly to this term 2ab. Now two things you can easily identify that is the like terms. a square plus b square we can compare it with 7 because they seem to me as like terms and the other part is 4 root 3 which is to be compared with 2ab. Now when you will write this you can cancel this two value and the ab product will be equal to 2 root 3. Now seeing this you can take the value of a as 2 and b as root 3. Now why I am so sure that those are the possible pairs because when you will substitute a as 2 and b as root 3 this value will also become equals to 7 because 2 square is 4 and root 3 square is 3. Now once you get this you can replace this total thing with 2 plus root 3 whole square whole over under root is equals to a that means finally you are getting the value of a as 2 plus root. And the question is asking you to find the value of a plus 1 by a. That means you have to find 2 plus root 3 plus 1 over 2 plus root 3. So let this 2 plus root 3 be as it is. To solve this you have to multiply it with its conjugate. So conjugate is 2 minus root 3. So when you will multiply it in numerator and denominator you will be left with only 2 minus root 3 because in the denominator it is becoming a plus b into a minus b which is the formula of a square minus b square. 2 square is 4, root 3 square is 1, 4 minus 1 is 1 and finally plus root 3 minus root 3 will get cancelled and the final answer is 4 which is there in the C of. Okay, okay now next question is again from basic operation and factorization chapter which is coming under number system. Now the question is, question number 98, question is asking you to find the value of x minus y whole cube plus y minus z whole cube plus z minus x whole cube. Whole over of it is 9 times of x minus y into y minus z into z minus x. Now the question is, are you going to solve all this or do we have a formula for that? Now the right is, we have a formula for that. Now what is that formula that if you want to calculate a cube plus b cube plus c cube for any expression then you have to first of all check whether a plus b plus c is 0 or not. Now if a plus b plus c is 0 then this total value will become equals to 3 abc. Now for that we have a formula and that formula is a cube plus b cube plus c cube minus 3 abc is nothing but a plus b plus c whole multiplied with a square plus b square plus c square minus ab minus bc minus c. Now how to use this formula, how we have got this answer because in this formula if a plus b plus c is 0 then this total part will become 0 and you will be left with only this and this value minus 3abc equals to 0 will lead to this. Now what you are going to do, you have to apply this formula in this question. Now you can say this is a, this is b and this is c without the powers. That means my a is x minus y, b is y minus z and c is z, z minus x. Now if I want to calculate the sum of the cubes of these three values, first of all I have to add them and on adding what I am seeing that a plus b plus c is giving me the answer as g. That means your 
you are eligible to use this formula because in my case a plus b plus c is 0 that means a cube plus b cube plus c cube is nothing but 3 abc and this value will become 3 into x minus y into y minus z into z minus x whole upon 9 times of x minus y into y minus z into z minus x. Now after cancellation you are left with only 3 by 9 which is equals to 1 by 3 which is there in my view. Now coming to the next question, now that is a question, till now we have not discussed any question of that particular chapter and in this time's paper you have got only one question from that chapter and that is set theory. Now this is a question from set theory in which he has given you three sets x, y and z and according to the question the first set contains a in bracket b and c as element. Then the second y consists of a in bracket then b and then c as element and z consists of a, b and c in bracket as element and the question is simple he is simply asking you to calculate what is this value now what is this written here is you have to find x intersection y and then intersection z now as you all know the meaning of this sign is the common element which you are finding between x and y now if you see clearly you can see that the common element in both of them is only c. You cannot take a because a here is without bracket and in this particular set it is with bracket. Same is the case with b. So only thing which you will get common from here is c. Now c when intersected with z. Now if you will see then this c is in bracket but this c is not in bracket. And there is no other common element with this particular set with this c so the answer will become 5 which is a null set and it is given in d also now coming to the next question that is again from question from quadratic equation that is question number 100 question is saying that there is a quadratic equation p x square plus 3 x plus 2 q equals to 0 in which there are two numbers p and q which you have to identify and find the value of p minus q and he is saying that this particular equation has got two roots let us assume those two roots be alpha and beta and the sum of these two roots and product of these two roots both of them are equals to minus 6 now what you have to do using this fact first of all you have to calculate the values of p and q and then you have to take the difference of p and q. Now according to my earlier concept all of us know that in a quadratic equation alpha plus beta is always minus b by a and alpha into beta is always c by a and according to my equation my a is p, b is 3 and c is 2q. Now suppose we start with that. So alpha plus beta is minus b by a. So minus b by a according to my equation is nothing but minus 3 by p. Now let us equate it to minus 6 because that is given. So after cancellation in the next step I will get 1 is equals to 2p and the value of p is coming out to be half. Now the way in which I have calculated p I will go for the calculation of q. Now for that alpha beta is equals to minus 6 and according to the theory alpha into beta is c by a. Now according to my equation c is 2q and a is p. So 2q upon p is equals to minus 6 and out of that I have already calculated the value of p as half. So I can write 2 into 2q is equals to minus 6 which will give me the value of q as minus 3 by 2. Now once I got the values of p and q, I can put the values here and I will get half minus of minus 3 by 2 that means 4 by 2 and the answer becomes 2 which is there in the C option. Now coming again uh, back to the paper because uh, somehow we have reached 100 then we are again coming back and now we are again going to deal with level uh, questions of geometry. Now let's start with question number 69. It's a question of geometry in which it is given that a right circular cone is there whose height is 8 cm. That means 
right circular cone has got the height as 8 cm and the radius of the base is 6 cm and he has simply asked you to find the tsa now the formula for tsa that is total surface area is simply pi r l plus r now this is the total surface area now in the figure of a cone total surface area means this body part and this ground part also now in this figure this is your height you can say this is height or vertical height and this is your radius and this part is your slant height now as it is a right circular cone this l is nothing but slant height and it can be calculated using the formula under root of x square plus r square that is nothing but our pythagoras theorem now in this question pi is 22 by 7 r is given to you as 6 now you have to calculate l and for calculating l h and r are given to you so it will become 64 plus 36 under root that means l is 10 so it will become 10 plus 6 now the total answer is 22 by 7 into 6 into 60 now as we see the option he is not bothered about this value he has simply kept that value as pi so i think my answer is there 6 into 16 is 96 and this value as it is that is 96 by centimeter square that is given in our theorems now next question is again from the chapter geometry and that is question number 70 this question is saying that there are six cubes all of us know that cubes are something like this all the sides are equal this cubes Are taken in total 16 number and each cube has an edge of 12 cm. That means you have to join all the six cubes like this. All the six cubes are being joined end to end. It is joined like this. Now suppose I am adding like this six cubes. That means my length part will become 12 into 6 because there are six cubes in this way. So 12 into 6, the length will become 72 cm automatically. and breadth and height will remain as it is that is 12 cm 12 cm each now as we do so my length breadth and height now are different from each other and we know that in a cuboid if your length breadth and height becomes in a cube if length breadth and height becomes different then it will take the shape of a cuboid and the question itself is saying then what is the surface area of the resulting cuboid now in case of surface area you have to always consider total surface area and the total surface area of a cuboid is nothing but 2 times of lb plus bh into hl and for that we have already calculated the value that means you have to simply substitute the value there and on solving it will give you 3744 cm square which is there in the c option Now the next question is again from a number system chapter. It is being given in this question that is question number seventy one that there is a real number which when added to its reciprocal gives you the answer as twenty six by five. And he is asking you how many such pairs of numbers are there. Now for solving this type of question, we have to first assume that let the number be x. Now when this number is added to its reciprocal. That means x is added to the reciprocal of x. That is one by x, and the answer becomes twenty-six by five. Question itself is asking how many such values of x you can take. Now, when you solve it, it will give you x square plus one upon my x is equal to twenty-six by five. That means five x square plus five is equal to twenty-six x. That means five x square minus twenty-six x plus five equals to zero. Now that has become a simple quadratic equation, which on splitting. Will give you the result as this. Five x you can take common. So finally you are getting two answers of x. One is five and one is one by five. Now you just think if you are taking five, then the other value is one by five only. That means the possible pair is five and one by five, and the answer becomes b. That is only one pair is possible. Now the next question is again from a chapter of trigonometry, from where we have got only one question this time, and that is the chapter height and distance. Now let's talk about this question. That is question number thirty-four. Now the question is saying that there are two pillars. One is of height small h, and the other is of height two h. 
Now suppose this is your small h and the height of this is 2h. Now you are taking a point in between them that is P. The question is saying the angles of elevation of the tops of the two pillars of height small h and 2h from a point P on the line joining the fit of the two pillars. Now suppose here you are making one angle of elevation and here you are making another angle of elevation. And they both are complementary. That means this is theta and this is 90 minus theta. Now he is saying if the distances of the foot of the pillars from the point P are x and y respectively. Then you have to find a relation between this h and this x and y. Now how you are going to start this question? First of all you take this triangle. From this triangle you can write tan theta is equal to h upon x. Take this as equation 1 or you can simply name it as equation 1. Now from this triangle again you can write tan 90 minus theta is equal to 2h by y. Now all of us know that tan 90 minus theta is nothing but cot theta. That means it will become cot theta equals to 2h by y. Let it be equation number 2. Now there is a relation between tan and cot that both of them are reciprocal. That means if we multiply both of them then the value is equal to 1. So in the same way this h by x into 2h by y is equal to 1 which in the next step will give you the relation 2x square equals to xy that is present in C option. So that is my correct answer. Now dear students, uh, before concluding this particular video, I would like to say that uh, this time uh, don't worry about the cutoff part because uh, all of uh, all of uh, you are saying that math paper is a bit difficult or it is a bit tricky or it is a bit lengthy. So it's lengthy, tricky and difficult for all the students. So don't worry about uh, the marks uh, which you are going to get but minimum if you are getting somewhere between 40 to 50 then it's a sure sort case of selection this time. Because as you know that this paper was uh, easy this time and English it remains average throughout the total CDS paper. So if you are getting in math somewhere between 40 to 50 then you are you can expect yourself to be get selected in the written exam this particular year. So there is nothing to worry about and moreover the questions which I have taken, I have taken these questions randomly. If you want me to discuss more questions then please uh, uh, have that uh, knowledge to us. You can uh, have a uh, doubt uh, numbers in our link. You can put that uh, uh, question numbers which you want me to discuss in a particular video through that link. I will definitely discuss those with you. Now, I have taken those questions only from uh, the students only. They have told me that these questions are a bit difficult. So please discuss this particular questions. Now, if you have more queries, then you can always ask through that Cavalier link. Thank you and all the best.